A, a big hit writer in Los Angeles. That's all she does. She doesn't perform. She just writes hits. She's written for the Starship. Nothing's going to stop us. And she's got, I think, Belinda Carlisle's new one. And she did Rhythm of the Night by DeBarge and stuff. And she and I had written together, actually, earlier in the year. And when the song that we did was, you know, it was a good song, but it wasn't, like, brilliant. And then later on, somebody came back and said, she's written the song. It sounds like something you'd write. And that's what hit writers do. They listen to your style. And obviously, we'd work together. And so I heard it, and I go, you know, it does sort of sound like something I'd write. And then other people said, you know, it sounds like a hit. And I go, hey, that's a good reason to put it on your album. Well, it is, so. and it's a good reason to have a look at it now. So here's Martha Davies on the album. Well, it's a fairly, fairly nice little collection of... Uh, Some very prestigious things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was lots of fun. There was uh, Charlie Sexton, Steve Brilliant. Ferris from Mr. Mr. Clarence Clemens. We know where he's from. Kenny G, brilliant horn player. Uh, Timothy B. Schmidt from the Eagles. All had different roles and different, different songs. And then like the Nucleus, which was my producer, Richie Zito, who is no slouch himself. He played with Elton John and various people. I mean, because we, you know, the band ended like two weeks into it, we just sort of were going around like grabbing people. And How'd you get together with all these people? It was a different story for each one of them. Like Clarence Clemens I met when I did this little crazy little movie last year. And I just said, you know, Clarence, will you play on my solo record? He goes, sure, darling. You know? It's that easy. <laughs> it was that easy. And then Bruce called him, the boss called him to L.A. to do something. And he called me and said, I'm in town. And I said, can you come over to the studio? And he just came over. You know, it was, it was wonderful. What is it like in L.A.? I get this impression from talking to you and other people that, you know, you just ring up people and say, hi, come, do you want to play on my album? It's and that everybody knows every knit. other. Yeah, it is close-knit. You, you have a, a circle of of people that, and actually, you know, us musicians try to s stick together, you know, and you, the, the longer you're in the business, the, long, the more people you know and stuff, so it's not uncommon to have, like, you know, let's see, just people calling up, um, I played on, I've sung back up for Don Henley, and it's like, you know, different people call, Charlie's out, called me up and asked me for lyrics for his new album, and it, you've kept a lot out. of your work in the family, also with your own daughters as well, haven't you? Yeah, my daughters are... Well, actually, my youngest daughter has just fallen in love with a wonderful guy who actually was one of the co-authors of the movie that I starred in last year. And my oldest daughter goes steady with my film clip director because she, uh, she got introduced when I put her to work doing wardrobe and she was doing styling and stuff and met the director and they've been happy ever since. So <laughs> it's nice. It's kind of like a love thing. <laughs> well, I know one of your favorite videos is the one we're going to be seeing next. And that's Robert Palmer, Addicted to Love. Oh, wait,